defended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. And you have offended Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. All right, welcome back. When we did the uh, news headlines at the beginning of the hour, I told you about Arizona's new medical marijuana law going online. And uh, in reporting on this, of course, I read lots of different uh, uh, newspapers out there, lots of different online sources. And uh, today, when the, the program went online, it went on literally just online. It's the only one that runs completely online. You can't walk in, you can't bring in paper, you can't mail stuff, you can't fax, no phone calls literally all digital right that's that's a that's a major milestone in medical marijuana it's the only state that does it that way that's a significant story so the associated press when they were covering this this was a reporter amanda lee myers she reported it in the lead paragraph and the follow-up lead by the way that's the the opening paragraph tells you all the who what where when how all that stuff right the lead and the follow-up here's here's the associated press report arizonans to begin applying for medical marijuana today Arizona's medical marijuana program is hitting a milestone Thursday as patients start turning in applications for the drug to help treat cancer and other diseases in what officials believe is the only completely electronic application system in the country. Since the application for a medical marijuana card is electronic, anyone hoping to apply in person or by phone with the Arizona Department of Health Services will be turned away. And if there are any kinks in the online system, they also will need to report the problem online. All right, so what did you get from that story there, right? Treating cancer and diseases, only online system, right? Well, the major points of those two paragraphs, right? Now, there's a shorter version from the AP that's going around other news outlets. This was from the San Jose Mercury News. Arizonans to begin applying for medical marijuana. Medical marijuana is online in Arizona. Beginning Thursday morning, patients can begin applying to get the drug to help treat cancer and other diseases. All right, there you go. Same basic info, right? treat cancer and other diseases and it's an online system got it but for the arizona republic however the lead of the story isn't about the opening of the country's first e-medical marijuana state program this piece by mary k reinhardt warns of the impending hordes of pot zombies roaming the streets of phoenix in search of strains strains here's the story Arizona's medical marijuana law takes effect. Health officials are concerned about certification mills. Arizona Republic. Arizona's medical marijuana law takes effect today, but patients already have been lining up to pay hundreds of dollars in some cases for pot recommendations from clinics that opened in recent weeks just for that purpose. Health officials are concerned that so-called certification mills could quickly turn a medical program into a recreational one, but they have limited recourse. <laughs> All right, so this pot zombie thing, this is an inside joke on the show. The pot zombie thing is a shorthand reference that I use to just, it explains a frame that the prohibitionists use about medical marijuana, that, you know, it's somehow rife with abuse. That, you know, there's tens of thousands of people on these programs. Oh, my God, you only said there'd be 500 patients. Oh, there's so many patients. I mean, you hear it when they got their complaints. Of, oh, only 3% have cancer or AIDS. Or they'll say, oh, look at all the young men coming in and out of the dispensaries, right? And, oh, and of course, of course, you hear it when they use the word pot, right? They'll use the word pot. Check those excerpts that I, it's on the blog at stash.normal.org. First two paragraphs of the AP stories, you'll find the word drug. You'll find the word marijuana, but you will not find the word pot. But in the Arizona Republic story, it's pot recommendations, right? Right there in the lead. Interesting, huh? Now, as far as this notion that we've got this out of control, crazy medical marijuana system and so many people are registering for it, we've got to flip this frame. The pot zombies frame is basically this idea that a few medical people get in, but then all the stoners are going to, oh, and they're going to get into the program, right? So let's flip the frame on them. Here's how you do it. Think for a moment that we're not talking about cannabis. We're not talking about pot, ganja, Mary Jane, marijuana, whatever. Let's suppose AstraZeneca comes out with a new pill and let's call it Curzitol. Now, Curzitol treats symptoms of nausea, pain, spasticity, seizures, glaucoma, wasting, anxiety, depression, loss of libido, inflammation, digestion, lesions, cancers, infections, and more. Curzitol's common side effects are red eyes, dry mouth, and euphoria. 
And Cursetol's worst side effects are anxiety or panic, paranoia, and a racing heart. Cursetol is non-habit forming with low risk of dependence and absolutely non-toxic. Best of all, AstraZeneca sells Cursetol in pill form for a very reasonable price, or they'll sell you a home Cursetol kit and you can manufacture your own Cursetol at home for pennies on the dollar. Would Cursetol not become the most popular and best-selling prescription on the planet? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Wouldn't doctors get flooded with requests from patients for a prescription for cures at all? So why is it shocking to us when a medical marijuana state provides a legal way for patients to use cannabis and that state's registry grows into the ten tens of thousands? If this were anything but medical marijuana, we would be proclaiming it a miracle drug. We would be hailing it from the tops of the trees. We would be screaming it across the headlines. Miracle drug legalized in this country. Miracle drug discovered. New pill treats all these things. Has such low risk of side effects. But no, 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 because it was in a Cheech and Chong movie. Yeah, we can't, uh, we can't treat it seriously. Now, the other thing, too, is that this, this pot zombies frame, part of it depends on the demonization of us, of the non-medical cannabis consumers. And it, it's also part of this medicine of last resort thinking, you know, because pot is so dangerous and so unpredictable, unpredictable that we got to try all manner of addictive and toxic pharmaceuticals first. And then only if none of them have the desired effect do we dare allow people to try this inconsistent, impure smoked herb. And then only for those suffering the most wretched agony and soon to meet the grim reaper. <sighs> the way we flip that frame is to portray cannabis as the medicine of first resort. If I suffer from pain, why wouldn't I take safer non-toxic cannabis instead of an addictive toxic opiate? If, if I got insomnia, why wouldn't I want to wind down with some relaxing cannabis and, instead of an Ambien that could lead to sleep driving? Sleep driving! <laughs> if I'm puking from nausea, why wouldn't I inhale cannabis smoke or cannabis vapor instead of trying to swallow and keep down a pill and wait 45 minutes for it to take effect? With so few and so mild side effects and such low risk of dependence and non-toxicity, why wouldn't we be trying cannabis first before we even pop an aspirin? Aspirin kills 7,600 people a year in this country. Now, see, Reinhardt's story back to the Arizona Republic, the whole, you know, scared of the pot zombies, the whole rest of the story only makes a passing reference to the whole online-only application. You know, the real news of this whole Arizona thing, that, my God, they're opening the only online, completely online medical marijuana program. It's a real, literally four words, the online only application. And then she blah, 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 goes on to the rest of her story. And then the rest of her story is all these scare quotes from the, the DHS director uh, warning about, quote, a handful of physicians writing casual recommendations explode the program. And then she gets a quote from the Arizona Medical Board that says, doctors are arriving at the answer before they've even met the patient. And then this guy who runs a chain of brick and mortar clinics is complaining about the guys coming in and doing the mobile clinics. They're putting doctors in a hotel room and not even giving you a physical. Well, we got to pivot on that too. We got to change that frame as well. And the way to reframe that is to pivot this idea of abuse into the idea of compliance. Look, you got large numbers of patients on a registry. That's a sign of a program successfully serving people who are eager to be compliant with the law. Many of these patients are people who have been illegally using cannabis to treat themselves medically for years, and now they're coming above ground. Former clandestine cannabis users are now registering with the state and complying with the law and agreeing to certain limits. And all that money that they were spending in an untaxed and unregulated market is now providing revenue and new jobs through these specialty clinics and a state-run dispensary system. Now... Might a purely recreational cannabis user, whatever that is, end up with a medical marijuana card? Yeah, sure, certainly. There is no bureaucratic system that cannot be gamed. It's going to happen. Some pot smoker might get a card. Oh, perish the thought. 
but look, Arizona's law is not California's law. You can't just walk into a, you know, a tent and say you got a backache or insomnia and get a card. There's some strict regulations regarding the qualifying conditions, and it's got to be documented in medical records. So this rare exception who games the system is still somebody who's going to the doctor. He's going to see a doctor and lying or whatever he's doing, but getting a recommendation from a doctor. He's still registering with the state. He's still bringing his untaxed, unregulated uh, economic activities above ground and helping to support the rest of the state. And he's agreeing to a two and a half ounce possession limit that would only be a misdemeanor anyway, and probably for a first offense, get him uh, probation and drug treatment. So now this guy who was the illegal pot smoker, who's got the card, who's contributed to the state, who's contributing to the economy, is not going to burden the law enforcement and the court system when you arrest him for the two ounces of pot he's carrying around. Everybody wins. That's the way we turn the frames on some of those ideas, and uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit more in our Hour 2 in Toker Talk Radio. Uh, we're going to wrap things up here, but coming up on the Normal Network later today, we're going to have a replay of the Viper Hour coming up after Toker Talk Radio. Then 4 o'clock, Normal Show Live, this show replaying. And then uh, 5 o'clock Thursdays, uh, we've got, um, oh, an, uh, I'm sorry, Viper Hour is at 5 today. Something else is at 3. Cannabis States of America is on at 6 o'clock from uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida the podcast for the South, John Doe Radio at 7 o'clock Pacific from Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City, and uh, our West Coast show for tonight, 8 o'clock Pacific, the Hollywood Hemptress Hour with the lovely Terry Joyce, a new episode, brand new episode, check that out. I'll see what we got coming up here at 3 o'clock will be, oh, Cannabis Agenda podcast, replay of Cannabis Agenda coming up at 3. For Ganja John and Coleco the Intern, and happy belated birthday to Cannabis Carrie, I'm Radical Russ. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers.